GBT5 rumors continue to swirl and they are getting increasingly specific. The latest are that the model actually is really, really good at coding. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition, all the daily AI news you need in around five minutes. GPT-5 fever is in the air and we are getting increasingly specific rumors as the much-anticipated model becomes closer and closer. Specifically, the reason Scuttlebutt is that, as the Informations article puts it, OpenAI's GPT-5 shines in coding tasks. Right, Stephanie Palazzolo, GPT-5 is almost here and we're hearing good things. The early reaction from at least one person who's used the unreleased version was extremely positive. GPT-5 shows improved performance in a number of domains, including the hard sciences, but the most notable improvement comes in software engineering. GPT-5 is not only better at academic and competitive programming problems, but also at more practical programming tasks that real-life engineers might handle, like making changes in a large, complicated code base full of old code. That nuance has been something OpenAI's models have struggled with in the past and is one reason why Rival Anthropic has been able to keep its lead with many app developer customers. And if you are a regular listener, you will know that honestly, at this point, Anthropic's dominance of coding use cases has to be one of the most long duration leads that we've seen in the foundation model space since ChatGPT kicked things off a couple of years ago. Going all the way back to Sonnet 3.5, Anthropic models really have been the default for coding use cases, although certainly Gemini's 2.5 suite, including Flash, have challenged that more recently. Now, in addition to that report from the information, there have also been more suspected sightings of GPT-5 in the wild. Last week, a new model codenamed Summit showed up on LM Arena. Professor Ethan Malik put it through its paces with his preferred custom benchmark posting, kind of amazing. The mystery model Summit with the prompt, create something I can paste into P5JS that will startle me with its cleverness in creating something that invokes the control panel of a starship in the distant future, and make it better. 2,351 lines of code, first time. He showed the results, and by the way, if you are listening rather than watching, this is worth maybe jumping over to YouTube or Spotify for. It's a ridiculously detailed control panel, unlike anything a previous model had generated. Grok 4's version was cool, but far less detailed, while six months ago, the results were fairly basic. Now, I'm not necessarily the hugest fan of custom coding benchmarks like the Hexagon test because they tend to be a little bit one-dimensional. What's nice about Ethan's prompt is that it touches on coding, creativity, and planning all in one hit. Now, aside from how visually impressive the result was, getting over 2,000 lines of functional code out of a one-line prompt is no small feat. Another mystery model that people were enraptured with was called Zenith. Justine Moore from A16Z writes, I'm blown away by some of the outputs from the new mystery model on LM Arena. It's called Zenith, and it seems to be good at a bunch of things, but I find the one-shot coding of functional games, this is Minecraft, to be particularly impressive. AI Battle wrote, the Zenith model that is being tested in LM Arena is producing some amazing outputs. With just a single prompt, it generated gun sounds, sprinting mechanics, a minimap, and detailed textures for a Doom-style game. Ilker tweeted, Can't believe what I just saw. While testing robot SVG drawing on LM Arena, I stumbled on the best SVG model I've seen so far. Outputs an actual animated SVG. Model codename is Zenith? Could this be GPT-5? Well, for those who are looking to actually get in there and test this themselves, Last night, Vrasser X noted that Summit and several other codenamed variants had been pulled. The models that have been removed include Summit, Zenith, Starfish, Nectarine, and Lobster, to which Vrasser X responded, All the GPT-5 models have officially left the web dev arena. The release is imminent. Get ready, folks. Now, speaking of the coding use case, Google is testing out a new vibe coding tool of their own. Called Opal, the tool is in some ways a little bit closer to N8N than it is to Lovable or Replit. The idea is to allow non-technical users to create apps using natural language prompts, but the point of differentiation is that Opal is geared towards mini-apps that live in Google's AI Studio, rather than big, fully functioning experiences of the type that people are going to Lovable or Bold for. In this way, it's a little closer to a workflow automation tool that allows users to chain together multiple prompts and tap Google's range of models to generate outputs. Google demonstrated the product being used to auto-generate blog posts, tapping into text, image, and video models along the way. Google also seems to be leaning into the social aspect of vibe coding with a remix gallery and a set of samples to get you started. Eric Friedman wrote, Just tried out Opal, the new AI tool from Google. Wow, things are changing very fast. I've seen a bunch of startups and tools like this, but seeing Google roll it out so quickly is wild. And you can see in Eric's tweet, an interface that will be very similar to you if you've used N8N or Lindy or anything like that. VC Nabil Hyatt writes, Interesting experiment in the AI apps workflow builder category, even if I'm pretty sure I never want to see another node-based graph in my life. From where I'm sitting, every single type of use case around coding, low-code and no-code app development, etc., 
is going to be some of the most significant area of development for the foreseeable future. Moving over to funding land, Anthropic is apparently fielding offers for fundraising that would value the startup up at $150 billion. The information reports that they are now in early discussions to raise between $3 and $5 billion and almost triple their $61 billion valuation from March. This is a big jump up from the reported interest that they were fielding earlier this month at $100 billion. But of course, Anthropic has not only reached $4 billion in ARR this summer, up from $1 billion at the beginning of the year, the rate at which they are growing has also increased fairly dramatically. After the leaked memo from last week, where CEO Dario Amade said that they were going to be more flexible and actually consider taking money from Gulf state investors, the latest reporting suggests that the new interest is coming from Abu Dhabi state-affiliated fund MGX. Now, MGX already owns a roughly 8% stake in Anthropic, which they purchased last year in the secondary market from bankrupt crypto firm FTX. The numbers seem high until you realize that $150 billion is only 40x revenue, which while yes, is meaningful is a lot less crazy than it might appear at first glance. Lastly today, an update in the talent wars. Mark Zuckerberg has installed former OpenAI researcher Sheng Jia Zhao as the chief scientist for Meta's superintelligence group. Zhao worked on multiple iterations of OpenAI's frontier models, including major research contributions to develop reasoning for O1. He'll be reporting to chief AI officer Alexander Wang and gives the team a leader with stronger research credentials. Posted Zuckerberg, in this role, Sheng Jia will set the research agenda and scientific direction for our new lab working directly with me and Alex. Sheng Jia co-founded the new lab and has been our lead scientist from day one. Now that our recruiting is going well and our team is coming together, we've decided to formalize his leadership role. Sheng Jia has already pioneered several breakthroughs, including a new scaling paradigm, and distinguished himself as a leader in the field. I'm looking forward to working closely with him to advance his scientific vision. Now, if you are wondering how this new position fits with Jan LeCun's role as chief AI scientist for the company, Zuck added, to avoid any confusion, there's no change in Jan's role. He will continue to be chief scientist for FAIR. Jan himself responded, My role as chief scientist for FAIR has always been focused on long-term AI research and building the next AI paradigms. I'm looking forward to working with Shang to accelerate the integration of new research into our most advanced models. Points out Charles Tahan, dude is three years out of grad school. Wild times, my friends, but for now, that is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief Headlines Edition. Next up, the main episode.